Has addiction taken a toll on your family? Are you feeling helpless as you watch a loved one struggle? Does it seem like there is nobody to talk to? You don't have to do it alone. Our doors are always open. Family Night at the McShin Foundation. Thank you, honestly. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm an addict. My name is Moses, a uh, person in long-term recovery, and I'm grateful to the God of my understanding for another shattered life, the God that brought me through all of that mess. And I'm grateful to 12-step programs for um, giving me a script to follow and for having you as examples of how to do this thing. Uh, I'd be lost without that. Um, I was thinking about a jail experience, and I don't have much of that. The, the only time that I was uh, locked up, uh, I, was, um, I was injured in jail. God injured me. And I ended up in MCV only to find out that I was suffering from uh, infectious endocarditis. And that, had, that was my second time around with that life-threatening, uh, debilitating illness. And I remember leaving the hospital and my doctor said, you know, if you stop using, you might get 10 or 15 years, you know, of, of life. So, you know, and I thought, <laughs> is that all? <laughs> is that all you can, you know? So <laughs> needless to say that I went back out. I went back on the stroll, and when I'd walk up the street, people would cross to the other side because they couldn't understand why I was out there. I was looking so bad, I was so sick, you know. And uh, I ended up going back to the hospital for the same condition, and that time I uh, stroked and uh, was in the hospital for three months, uh, major surgery to repair aneurysms, and two aneurysms, and and I went back again. I used again even after that, you know, facing death. But life was not worth enough for me at that time to have any hope. I still didn't have any hope. Um, the last time I went to treatment, and it was my 13th time, uh, something happened. One of the things was that my counselor uh, interrupted a call from my wife who wanted me to come home to take our son to a conference or, or something. And she said, well, let me talk to her. And she said some things to my wife that I, boy, I said, oh my God, <laughs> you know. But in fact, what she said was, uh, you want to take this man out of here as sick as he is. Uh, he needs to stay in recovery so that he can have a life uh, to live. And that thing threw me, and I was sent to a halfway house in Newport News where uh, I stayed for some nine months, and things began to turn around. Uh, for me. Um, I was introduced to the 12-step program probably about my third time, but we had groups and the like in the halfway house, and they made a difference for me. I remember my first service work in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, this guy um, asked me to go with him to the jail to talk to those black guys because, you know, they wouldn't listen to me is what he said. You know, and I thought, I can do that, you know. But I liked this guy 
because he was one of those rough and tough guys, nobody messed with him. You know, I thought, yeah, this is who I want to be with. Um, but that was my first service work, uh, being uh, clean. And it has made all of the difference. Um, service work has what, uh, is what has, has, has helped me to survive. It is what has helped me to thrive. Now, uh, being at McShin, uh, I tend to give a lot of assignments and the like. But uh, folks will, uh, will, will take the assignments and not do them. Uh, one being, get a sponsor. Get a sponsor. You know, that's so hard for folks uh, to hear, to even try and follow that direction. Uh, I, I, I'm honestly said that I had the privilege of doing the family program on Wednesday night. And uh, last Wednesday, the participants, you, and your loved ones were there. And I thought we had a, a pretty good group. Uh, Karen uh, was there uh, co-facilitating with me. And it was, if you could see the hope on the parents' faces when they, they uh, think about their child being here and they think that they'll that you'll get fixed here. But see, that's not true. That's not true. If you guys don't cooperate with what's asked of you to do, and to me, it means don't pick up, don't use. And if we can teach them how not to go for your mess, because see, they're victims. I think you open your mouth and they're ready to give you the world. And that's exactly what ruins things. So what we get parents to do is to look at what is it that they've done to uh, get in the way of your recovery. They don't know. They don't know. So when we can help them to learn that and get them to stop and get them to stay in recovery, just like we want you to stay in recovery. Don't use. Don't use. It's the hardest thing in the world to get across. Uh, I remember two minutes, my God. I remember <laughs> uh, coming, coming back to Richmond uh, when I was sent to detox the last time, my counselor down at the methadone program uh, suggested if I could get, uh, go down to MCV and, and get straight, make an appointment, that he would get me in to treatment. That, that sounded so far-fetched, you know, but it happened. Uh, one of the things I heard was that a middle-class black man, he said, I want to see how you manage this recovery thing. I didn't know what he was talking about. But when I came home, what I discovered was that I didn't see the people that I used with. I didn't know where they were. And so the mission started. Right there. You know, I remember uh, uh, the group we started in Mosby Court. We, we do recover, even in Mosby Court. You know, that was fantastic. And my early recovery was spent uh, getting meetings started, getting uh, folks to come to be a part of this recovery effort. Uh, we talked about attraction rather than promotion. 
uh, from what I've seen, my experience is once folks get a taste of this, they're here, you know? And so my invitation to the participants is still, you know, don't use. Get a recovery program. Get a sponsor. Do something different, you know? It's well worth it. Thank you. Let me share.